so we are now on the row 166 which is the very last row and it is the bind of row so i'm going to show you um two different ways how to bind off your project uh, we've got one way that is in the pattern but i thought it might be nice for you to see an alternative way how you can bind off so um in any case or in each case <laughs> you would uh, start with um, tunisia knit stitch in the next stitch so we go from front to back yarn over pull up a loop and you pull through the loop that you just made through the loop that was already on the hook so we will do that two more times so tunisia knit stitch and pull through the loop on the hook tunisia knit stitch pull through the loop on the hook we will work one tunisian simple stitch and pull through the loop on the hook so that's the beginning of our project and now i'm going to show you first the method which is not in the pattern which would be a tunisian simple stitch bind off so we'll continue working tunisian simple stitches and binding of these stitches so i'm going to do a few for you to see how that would look like okay so now when you look at the project the last row before you we, we work in the bind off looks like a row of tunisian simple stitches now that might be good enough but um, if you think about it, it kind of distorts the overall stitch pattern that we've created um, working the lace. So what I uh, suggested in the pattern instead is to continue working the stitch pattern uh, as in the lace, which is Tunisian two simple stitches together and Tunisian full stitch. However, instead of keeping the loops on the hook, we would bind off as if we were working the stitch pattern so how that would look like is so you will go under the two stitches which would be the two simple stitches together and then pull through the loop on the hook now we would work tunisian full stitch and pull through the loop on the hook now we'll go back into tunisian two simple stitches together and bind that off Tunisian full stitch and bind off and we will repeat this all the way to the end of the row and I will meet you right at the end where we will be finishing the row of the bind off Now I'm at the end of my row, I've got a few more stitches to bind off. So I've got Tunisian two simple stitches together, Tunisian full stitch, two Tunisian simple stitches together, Tunisian full stitch, two Tunisian simple stitches together, Tunisian full stitch. So we go into the end stitch as a normal yarn over pull up a loop pull through the loop that is already on the hook then you leave about let's say eight to ten inches probably ten of yarn for bind uh, for weaving the end snap your yarn and pull through okay and that's it that's how we bind up the last row and as you can see the stitch pattern continues all the way to the end and we've got a chains at the edge so that it gives it um, a rather nice and neat look so i'll meet you for the next section which will be blocking your project welcome back to the part we're going to be talking about blocking your project so once you finish your show you can see that the edges curl up a little bit 
uh, on some bits, especially where we were changing uh, colors between the uh, forward and return pass, the um, edges are a little bit uneven. And for example, here in this lace section, this section would really benefit with uh, from a bit of stretching to to open up the lace and really make it stand out. So what I like to do, I like to um, steam block. Um, it's really entirely up to you whether you choose to wet block or steam block. It's just the method that I prefer. I think steam blocking really softens the fa fabric, makes it um, very flowy and uh, have a really nice drape. But if you prefer, you can also soak your project, squeeze the water gently on a towel by wrapping the project in your towel and then squeezing the towel. And, and then unwrapping and um, pinning down to block. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you of a sample of the shawl in a different yarn uh, color and combination. And as you can see, it's got a really nice drape. It's not hard. Um, and also, so when we look at the uh, same section of the shawl on the one we just made, you can see that the edges are sitting really nice and straight it doesn't have any curl the stitches are nice and even throughout the project and this is what we are trying to achieve by blocking so um, I haven't mentioned weaving in ends before so just um, before we start actual blocking of our project I just mentioned weaving in ends so for this project i would recommend that you weave your ends after blocking the reason why is if you weave in ends now and then you stretch your project those ends can start poking out so you would have to uh, kind of touch it up on on those bits so it's better i think in terms of um, saving you time and the overall look of the final show to block it first and then weave your ends so what i like to do when it comes to show with um an even shape like the banana shape here i like to start from the part where we finished the tip i place it down and because i want this section to be really distinct i want it to stand out i want it to be nice and crisp i would start here I would pin it down and then I make sure that to maintain the shape I try to uh, pull the project or kind of stretch it out in a similar way on both sides so that it's nice and even so around this um, tip point I would put a more pins in just to make sure that the shape is maintained so I might not use uh, use the pins in this interval on the for the rest of the project I'm going to use more pins here and I also use more pins on the sections which seem to be a little bit uneven for example this section here where I was um, doing the color work some of the end stitches are larger some of them are smaller so I'm going to kind of fix this by blocking and by making sure that it is nice in a straight line okay so I would say that you continue blocking your project and then I will show you how my show looks uh, on the blocking mat at the end of the pinning okay so as you can see i've now pinned down my show on the blocking mat there it is so i'm going to now progress on to the next step so as i mentioned before i'm really a firm believer of steam blocking so i'm going to get uh, my little device going so i'm using this steamer just a couple of pounds 
on Amazon. I think it was less than £20 on Amazon. But you don't necessarily have to have a special steamer to steam your project. Uh, for the longest while, I was using uh, normal iron that we use for ironing clothes. So I'm going to... So what I like to do, um, I like to go through each um, area uh, several times to the point where the project is slightly damp but not wet to make sure that it doesn't take uh, too long to dry so usually um it takes about 24 hours to dry properly so i leave the project pinned down for about a day sometimes even a little bit longer to make sure that the, that the shape really sets in the stitches are nice and even that the edges are straight at the points that you want to be um, have a particular shape that those are really set in the shape as you desire so I'm going to get my steamer going usually it takes a few moments and then I'm going to steam my project So what I would add um, to the to this section is that when you are steaming your project, you don't want to be touching your fabric. You can flatten your project with natural fibers. Uh, sometimes you want to go for that look, but sometimes that will be probably not the desired look that you want to go for. After all those hours that you spent working on your project, um, it would actually damage your project. So. Just go about inch or half an inch about the fabric. Welcome to the very last stage of the project, which is weaving in your ends. So you've made it all the way here. Well done. You can be so proud of yourself. So now what we're going to do, we've got a um, few ends to weave in. So I'm going to show you how I weave in my ends. So we can start anywhere. I'm going to start with this one. As I mentioned, I like to weave in my ends after I block my project. So this would be the last stage of the project. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to do weaving in, in the way that I go under one stitch over another and through the next one so I'm going to show you what I mean and you can basically go in any directions you like uh, just to bear in mind that if you go too deep under the strands of yarn where there is um, alternating color it can show from the other side so I usually like to weave in um, the yarn for example I this is the color B. So I like to weave it in in section where I worked the color B. So it wouldn't show from the other side so much or at all. So I'm going to go into this, um, the yellow section. So I'm going to go under, over and through this. Okay. And I'm going to do that few two few times. I'm going to go under, over and through. like so under over and through under over and through this one is a bit tricky to work okay and you can go in that way and then on, on the way back as well over f this few more times. And this secures the um, yarn in a way that it's not likely to show over and through. And if it starts poking out, 
if you're weaving about let's say um eight inches then you can just um cut off the the bit they will show up okay so because over the time it is inevitable that it starts poking out um at the end however if you're weaving enough yarn then you can cut it without worrying that it will actually start and that the stitch button will start undoing so this is how i weave in my end and um i hope you've learned new stitches new techniques that you can use in your projects and any future patterns that you will make or even design your own projects thank you very much and bye bye